Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make a dark fruit cake and this is what it looks like. This cake is wonderfully moist. It's very flavorful. We have nuts, we have dried fruit, candied fruit, ground spices, and then once the cake is baked, we are going to brush it with alcohol, which also makes the cake moist and flavorful. Plus the alcohol acts as a preservative, so this cake stores really well. So the first thing you will need to do is to preheat your oven to uh, 300 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 150 degrees Celsius. And then we are going to bake our fruit cake in a loaf pan. So this is eight and a half by four and a half by three inches deep, which is 21 and a half by 11 and a half by seven and a half centimeters. Lots of numbers today. Um, so what I like to do first is I just lightly spray my pan. You could just use a little oil if you don't want to use a, one of these non-stick sprays. And then, back there, and then I'm going to line the pan. So I have, with parchment paper, so I have two pieces. So I'm gonna do the long one first to get the sides, like so. And then I'm just gonna put a little, I'm just gonna butter this. You could just put your oil so that this paper sticks to the other paper. And then I'm going to put that in. as best as I can here. Okay, you know what? I did it the wrong way. That's why. I was wondering <laughs> I thought, I'm sure I measured that correctly. <laughs> there, okay, that's the right way. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> and now I'm going to butter my paper oil, or you could just, you know, spray it. Because we don't want our cake to stick to our paper. Okay, yeah, I got that done. <laughs> okay, so for our cake batter, really easy batter. We're not, we don't need our uh, stand mixer or ham mixer for this. We're just gonna mix it by hand. I'm gonna start with the dry ingredients. I have one and a half cups, which is 195 grams of all-purpose flour, plain flour. For these spices and the leavening, I have a half a teaspoon, two grams of baking powder, a quarter of a teaspoon, one gram of baking soda, a quarter of a teaspoon, I'm just uh, one gram of a fine kosher salt or a table salt. Then for the spices, now this is what I use, of course, if you want more or less, you can adjust it to your own taste, but I'm adding one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and then a quarter of a teaspoon of ground ginger and a quarter of a teaspoon of ground cloves. I'm just gonna dump that in there. And I'm also going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of ground, freshly ground nutmeg. This is a little nutmeg. You can just buy them on the spice aisle of your grocery store. You know, if you can't find it, you can just leave it out. Or you could use a quarter of a teaspoon of ground allspice as another uh, Thing you could do. So I'm just using my microplane. If you have a box grater, just use a fine one. And I'm just going to eyeball this about a quarter. Because if I do more, that's okay because I like nutmeg. <laughs> if you don't like, some people don't, you can just leave it out. Okay. And I'm just going to whisk all that together. So that ground cinnamon, I call this a dark fruit cake. I do have like a light fruit cake on the site. It looks white, but this is dark and that ground cinnamon is a lot of the reason for that color, dark color, which I like. I like the flavor. I like how it looks. So for our add-ins, I have a half a cup, 50 grams of chopped nuts. You could use um, pecans, walnuts, almonds, hazelnuts, you know, sometimes uh, fruit cakes have Brazil nuts. I like that as well. But I'm using pecans today, so just roughly chop those. I'm also adding a half a cup, which is 60 grams of raisins. I'm using the golden. You could use the dark. If you don't like raisins, you could use like dried cranberries, 
dried cher uh, cherries. And, okay, I like candied fruit. Some people don't, but I just love it, especially the cherries. So I'm adding a uh, half a cup, 100 grams of the candied. I've got the red and the green, kind of Christmassy colors. And I do chop my uh, cherries into quarters. Dump that in. And because I can never get enough candied fruit, I'm adding three quarters of a cup, 120 grams of candied mixed peel. Now, I know there is people out there that do not like candied fruit. So, what you could do is just replace your candy mix peel and your candy cherries with dry, like more chopped nuts, uh, more dried fruit. You know, you could add, I only added golden raisins. You could use the dark raisins. You could use currants. You could add, like I said, the dried cherries, dried cranberries, apricots, mango. You could cut up um, dates, dried dates, figs, prunes. I mean, really. You could make it more that way. If you're like me <laughs> here, and I like my candied fruit, a lot of times, if you, I like fruit cake all year round. So what I do at Christmas time, because that's, that's when you find the candied fruit in the stores, I buy extra. Just check the expiry date, and then you can make fruit cake all year round. Or what you can do is make lots of fruit cakes at Christmas time and then freeze them, have them all year. So just mix that in. So that is all our dried. Let's put that there. So for our wet ingredients, I have in another bowl two large eggs. Have your eggs at room temperature. Two large eggs of the shell is 100 grams. So just whisk to break them up. Then I'm going to add a third of a cup, which is 75 grams of melted butter, and then melted. And if it's really hot, bring it down to room temperature before you add it to your eggs. And you know, for this, you could use salted or unsalted butter, whatever you have in your house. And then I'm also adding two tablespoons, 30 grams of unsulfured molasses. Gives it a nice flavor. Also helps with the coloring. If you don't like molasses or some people say they, where they live, they can't find it, you could use honey, whatever your favorite honey is. Whisk that in. And I'm also going to add a half a cup, 120 milliliters, 120 grams of just milk. Have your milk at room temperature. You know, if you didn't have any milk, you could use a fruit juice for this as well, like apple, orange, maybe. I'm using milk. And next, or the last thing, is a half a cup, 100 grams of light brown sugar. It's not a lot of sugar. This isn't a really sweet cake, which I like, but it's very moist. And as you can tell with all this stuff, it's very flavorful. So, let's move this all out of the way. And we're just going to I'm just going to make a little bit of a well in the center, pour in the wet. As you can see, once, you know, the hard part of this cake is getting everything, all the ingredients together. But the actual mixing of the batter is very easy. So, you know, if you want to make a Christmas time, a bit of a production line and bake a few, you could double the batter and just do it, put it into two loaf pans, make it easier. So just mix it together just until all the dry ingredients are moistened. Yeah, that looks good. So now 
take our loaf pan. And just spread that out. I'm just using offset spatula, you just use a spoon. So now for the baking, because we're doing it at a lower temperature, you know, a lot of times you do cakes at 350 Fahrenheit, 180 um, C, but we're doing the, um, slot there, uh, 300 Fahrenheit, 150 C. So it's gonna take a little longer. I'm gonna say somewhere between one and a quarter and one and a half hours. You know, depending on your oven, everyone's oven is a little different. But somewhere around that time, until a toothpick inserted into the center comes out clean. Now, I do like to rotate my pan front to back about halfway through, get a nice even bake. And if you find, check at about an hour. And if it's over browning, if it's kind of getting like you think that's brown enough, I don't want it any browner than that, then just take a piece of foil and put it over the top of the pan and so it won't brown anymore. So one and a quarter to one and a half hours. So our fruitcake is done. So put your pan on a wire rack. Doesn't that look gorgeous? I like it this dark. I didn't cover it with foil, but if you would prefer it, like I said, a little lighter than about in an hour, put a piece of foil over the top. So I did put a toothpick into the center. It came out clean. So what I'm gonna do is let it cool just like this for about 10 minutes. And then when we come back, we're going to brush it with alcohol. So it's been about 10 minutes. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna brush the top with the alcohol. But first I'm gonna take, you can use a wooden skewer. I'm using just a toothpick. And I'm just going to poke it all over. That way it'll kind of go in down into the cake. Now the crust is quite crisp when you first bake the cake, but when you store it, then it softens. Now, I know I have got questions in the past about um, if you don't want to use alcohol. I mean, you could use a fruit juice and just brush it with that or nothing really. Uh, of course, if you're not using alcohol, alcohol will preserve a fruit cake. So this will last for weeks at room temperature or in the fridge stored, where if you did it with fruit juice, it would be just like an ordinary cake, maybe last, you know, four or five days. So just to keep in mind. So what I do is now I got my pastry brush. I'm gonna brush it with alcohol. I'm using there's all different types of alcohol you could use. Just keep in mind, you know, it does flavor your fruit cake, so whatever you like. I like to use a rye whiskey. You could use rum, you could use a brandy, bourbon, sherry, you know, sometimes uh, like a Grand Marnier I use, but I kind of get the rye whiskey. So just brush. You can really smell that because the cake's still hot or warm. And be very generous. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm not just going to brush this once. I'm going to like store it. And I, for about two, like three weeks, depending on how much you want the alcohol flavor, for about two or three weeks, I do it twice a week with the alcohol. So it makes it really flavorful, really moist. It's wonderful. <laughs> Some people I know don't do like brush it like this. What they do is take a piece of cheesecloth, soak it in some alcohol and then wrap the whole cake. 
you could do that if you want. So that's what, okay, one more. Why not? Give it a really good brushing. So that's what you do and then let it cool down completely and then you can take it out of the pan. And then once it's right at room temperature, you can wrap it. So I, um, I did this one about a week ago. So I have brushed it a couple times. And then how I wrap it to store it is I take my cake. I have a piece of plastic wrap. Wrap it really well like this. And then I take a piece of foil and then I wrap it in the foil. And then if you want to make extra, extra sure, you could put it into a cake tin or a plastic like freezer bag. And then you want to store it. Now, if you, when I lived in Canada and I made this in the winter, I would put down into the basement because it was really cold. That's how I would store it. And then I would just, you know, go down, you know, once or twice a week and brush it and do that. But I don't live in the, uh, I live in the States, in the South, where it's hot. So I put this in the refrigerator and then I take it out. That's how I store it in the refrigerator. So either way, and so this will keep, once you've brushed it for two, three weeks with the alcohol, it will, you can store it in the fridge or in a cool place for weeks, or you can freeze it. I often, and what I do when I freeze it, I take the um, fruit cake and I slice it and put a little piece of uh, parchment paper in between the slices. So if I want to just take a, a couple slices at a time, I can, and it's already pre-cut. So this is what it will look like. Must chew. <laughs> um, so like I said, I brush this twice with alcohol. I can, I can, it is a mild flavor of the alcohol. It is very moist and it's just loaded with flavor. You know, you got all those candied fruits, the, the raisins, then the little crunch of the nuts, and then all the ground spices. You know, I personally, I love fruitcake. I know some people like to put a, a, a frosting on it. I don't. I either just eat it like this or I like it, I do like it with a little bit of butter spread on there. That's really good too. <laughs> um, now, like I said, you can store this once you've brushed it without, you can store for weeks or freeze it. I do have, I'm a big fruitcake person. So if you like this type where you brush it with alcohol, I do have a round, a large round recipe for that. So you can go to thejoyofbaking.com, either our YouTube channel or our website. And then I have a recipe for that. I have a light fruit cake. If you prefer, you don't want the dark with all the spices, I have a light fruit cake. I have a really easy fruit cake where you actually boil first and then just add the stuff, all the rest of the ingredients. I have that. I actually have a buttermilk fruit cake for those that want an eggless recipe. So check it out because fruit cakes to me are not just for Christmas. I know some people, no. To me, they're a year round, a wonderful everyday cake. So you must try this one. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Mm -hmm.